Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to the Philosophy for Philistines channel, which I hope you're sharing with your friends and subscribing and ringing the bell and leaving your thoughts as to what uh, we're delving into in these difficult discussions. I have a thought-provoking one for you today. There's no more dangerous group of folks than those who think they already know more what they have failed to understand. From an article written by Lieutenant General retired Michel Maisonneuve, special to the National Post, published today, entitled Lieutenant General Maisonneuve Clearing the Air About My Anti-Woke Speech Before I'm Completely Cancelled. I a subtitle, I have faith that we can fix what ails Canada with leadership service unity and courage. Now, while I laud the general for what he had to say at the dinner where he was being honored, and I posted the link to that article uh, in my blog, I have these thoughts that I wish the general would consider, and I hope you will consider as well. Sadly, General Massanouf, leadership cannot repair ideological possession. The nation is in the grip of a psychic attack on the very values, culture, and traditions which built it. Postmodern cultural Marxists fully intend to continue to march through all of our institutions until they've completely corrupted and undermined them under the premise of the greatest oxymoron assertion of all time, progressivism. Yesterday I wrote the following regarding the complete failure of the West's energy policies and companied as they invariably are with catastrophizing. This catastrophizing is nothing other than globalist sanctioned woke speech for, and here you're going to hear an excellent run on sentence, for if you don't do as we tell you, you bigoted racist Neanderthals, the climate will kill us, even though we artificially create the very problems we tell you that only more government can solve, and then use those very problems to rob you of your liberty and economic well-being, and when that fails to solve the problems we created, we will double down on robbing you of yet more liberty and economic well-being, while leaving you to freeze in the dark because of the climate that we promised would kill you, so I guess that makes us right after all. That's pretty much paraphrasing how these globalists think. So, RE net, net zero carbon emissions. The only thing which will be reduced to zero is our freedom. Make no mistake that climate catastrophizes our dialectical materialists fomenting a Marxist revolution, so they alone will control all the resources and wealth. If you follow the Philosophy for Philistines vodcasts and blogs, you will have noted that I've not only stated that as clearly and precisely as I am able, but that I've also provided you who care to listen with the tools to counter this cultural revolution. The Hegelian dialectic, which was reworked, reworked into dialectical materialism by Marx and Engels, is now being employed in a such a blatantly obvious manner that even the legacy media in Canada are openly condemning Trudeau's obvious collusions with Xi Jinping and the CCP, the WDF, the WHO, etc., etc. The Freedom Convoy last year and the fallout from the failed hearing to determine if Trudeau had exceeded his legal mandate to govern when he invoked martial law have only widened and deepened the dialectical divide to form a psychic chasm which is the Grand Canyon of all ideological divides. This has left the nation riven with Canadians shouting at one another across a gulf so broad, deep and wide that communication, communication across it has become virtually impossible. Things are about to get very ugly and certainly not just here in Canada. I'm living proof of someone who has taken no pleasure in predicting the demise of limited government under proper parliamentary oversight and the rule of law. 
All one need do to determine if I spoke the truth is available, available for you to peruse at no cost at the Philosophy for Philistines channel. It's always free, always informative, and always exposes the dirty underbelly of the vile globalist agenda. And as for our leadership, a quote from uh, Dr. Peterson's forward to the Gulag Archipelago. It was Solzhenitsyn who most crucially made the case that the terrible axis of communism could not be conveniently blamed on the corruption of the Soviet leadership, the cult of personality surrounding Stalin, or the failure to put the otherwise stellar and admirable utopian principles of Marxism into proper practice. It was Solzhenitsyn who demonstrated that the death of millions and the devastation of many more were instead a direct causal consequence of the philosophy, worse perhaps, the ideology, the theology driving the communist system, the hypothetically egalitarian universalist doctrines of Karl Marx contained hidden within them sufficient hatred, resentment, envy, and denial of individual culpability and responsibility to produce nothing but poison and death when manifested in the world. End of quote. And that was an excerpt from Dr. Jordan Peterson's forward to the 50th anniversary edition of Solzhenitsyn's The Gulag Archipelago. Yes, Canada has become hypothetically egalitarian, where the universalist doctrines of Karl Marx contain the dialectical materialism of communism, with sufficient hatred, resentment, envy, and denial of individual culpability and responsibility to produce nothing but poison and death being manifested here in Canada today. But there's an idea hidden within the Christian message which few appear to understand, certainly not as profoundly as Solzhenitsyn did. And as I asserted at the beginning of this paper, there is no more dangerous group of folks than those who think they already know what they have failed to understand. We are all accountable for one another's behavior and moral failings, as well as for that of our own. This is why I assume the burden of writing the hard truths contained in these blogs which I can assure you is far from pleasant and enjoyable. Dealing with the sinful nature of man, indeed my own sin, and finding salvation begins with me. This requires introspection and a rejection of narcissism in order to confront my own moral failings. For it is only then that I will be able to deal with the perverse rejection of God around me. And here is something to think and pray about. Christ knew no sin. Yet he became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. What does that mean? Christ metaphorically holds the position of being the only perfect man to have ever lived. The scriptures make the fascinating assertion that he did so as the Son of Man, not as the Son of God. Christ knew that he was personally accountable for everyone else's behavior and for what they believed. Therefore, he invited them to voluntarily place their faith in him. So here we have an example of the living truth himself, the very logos by which God created the universe, assuming blame for sins which he did not commit. And what did he commission us to do? Namely the same by taking up our cross to follow him. Everything that happens is in some way my fault. I must assume responsibility if I am to assist the kingdom of God to come to earth so that his will may be done to counter the insane machinations of narcissistic lunatics in power who seek to enslave humanity with their toxic and godless ideology. And moreover, that it is their error that I must also seek to address, for their error is my error too. Those are some thought-provoking things to think and pray about on this December the 1st. God bless you all. I 
I invite you all to, to become involved in this discussion. Tell me where you think I've got things right, where I think you think I've got things wrong. And uh, share the heck out of this vlog. Thank you. God bless your afternoon.